It's a great morning here in Galveston. I hope each of you have had a great week and you're ready to, this morning to worship our Creator. I don't want to take a lot of time, but I do want to remind you about Back to Church Sunday, which happens next Sunday. What is Back to Church Sunday? It is a national movement amongst churches of all denominations to invite their friends, their family, or just folks you meet on the street to give church a try. Some may never have been to church. Some left for various reasons. All are just waiting for someone like you and I to invite them. Let me tell you about three encounters I had on Friday at our food distribution. The first, Butch was talking with a family as I walked around the corner of their vehicle, and he pointed me out. In talking with these folks, they were looking for a place to go to church locally and had been asking around. The wife tells me that she has heard great things about Bread of Life and their pastor. After a lengthy discussion, I invited them to attend on August the 18th and be my guest. I'm expecting them to be here. The second encounter, I had the opportunity to pray with an older woman. She would be going to the doctor this week and was scared of the diagnosis to come. Leslie and I began to pray with her and over her. And in the middle of that prayer, there was a powerful anointing of healing that happened. It was a moment that can't be explained, only experienced. Before leaving, she was getting information about the church and its services, and I'm looking forward to hearing what the doctor had to say next Sunday. The third encounter was with a husband and wife that I had been praying for for some time. I invited the two of them to join us. He tried to give me excuses, and I swatted them down. He asked me about questions about the Nazarenes and proved that he was really listening and was sincerely interested. As they were leaving, I made one last invitation to join us. I could see the hesitancy to commit, but the desire to come. I don't know what will happen, but I sincerely pray they will attend. These last three years have been devastating to many people. We've gone through lockdowns and COVID. Schools were shuttered and our kids were put into remote learning situations. Current studies have shown that we did more harm than good to the people and to our kids. The divorce rate has increased. The suicide rate, especially among teens, has significantly increased. Our nation and our world is in turmoil. Between the war in Ukraine and increased prices, hope seems to be in short supply today. That's where Back to Church Sunday comes in. Our theme this year is Hope Happens Here. My message next week will be about hope, finding hope, restoring hope, the very hope we have in Jesus Christ. Take a moment to watch this invitation video with me. Today's current events can be pretty discouraging, and life can seem pretty hard. On top of that, having to feel like you have to face it all alone. The good news is, you don't have to. There's a place where you can find genuine connection, answers to tough questions, meaningful friendships, a purpose for your life, and hope. All this and more can be found in a community of faith, God has a purpose and plan for your life, and he is just longing for you to discover it. 
So consider this your personal invitation to church. We would love for you to join us this weekend because hope happens here. Well, there you have it. Hope happens here. This video is running on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, and on our website. I've put about $1,000 into Google Advertising, which is running right now. Now it's up to you. Who will you invite to join you next Sunday for Back to Church Sunday? A simple invitation is all it takes to change a person's eternity. Hello, hello. Um, uh, first announcement is it is like it says up on the uh, projector alabaster month. September is alabaster month. Um, Miss Cheryl, you know about this, right? You are you heading this up? Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Don't don't ask Miss Cheryl. So uh, save your change, and at the end of the month, they're going to be t taking up a collection. And uh, from what I understand, alaba the alabaster offering is used to build churches overseas. Um, so that's obviously very important. Um, we have some prayer requests that Pastor wanted me to uh, set forth, and that is to continue to pray for Stephen, whose surgery was went went excellent. He went excellent. He's just in a little bit of pain now, right, bud? Um, Charles uh, last night and asked if I would share this, um, what's going on with him. It says, uh, it took a little longer than expected. They got the plate and the screws in on the one side. They opened the other and the area that broke was too small to be secured by a screw. So he said it and is going to watch it, but said it would heal well. He wants me putting as little pressure as possible on it and using it as little as possible. I have a nerve block, which is helping with much of the pain but the one incision is hurting some. I'm taking pain meds now and it's helping with pain. I am now wearing an air cast that comes up to just below my knee. I'll see the doctor again on the 20th. Now he, te he texted me this and then 30 minutes later he texted me and said, "Never mind, this is really bad pain. So we'll be back at church um, October 2nd and he's going to be uh, doing a series on beating burnout for his sermons. That's, that's kind of the same. I, I don't know. I think Stephen had a block and it wore off and then he was in a lot of pain. That's what happened right after his surgery, too. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, good morning. I'm plenty loud. That's good. All right. Well, if you're glad to be here, say amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so blessed to be here among you, and we know that you are here within our presence. We want to lift your name up this morning through our song. We want to praise you and worship you this morning. Help us to focus on you. We love you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Let's join together. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to prison door sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Spring up a well and give to me that life abundantly. I've got a river of life flowing walk in the blind to see, opens prison 
Christ endures, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Spring up a well and give to me that life abundantly. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well.
Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath. We live for you, beside you, open up my eyes in wonder, and show me who you are, and fill me with your heart, and lead me in your love to those around me. Father, we are so thankful this morning for the blessings you've provided each and every one of us, that we all have trials. We know that you're there right with us, and we know that you will get us through every one of them. We sing this morning about following you, about building our foundation on you. We want to be like you, Lord. We want to imitate you in every aspect of our lives. We just are so thankful, Lord, for everything you've done in our lives. And we just want to bless you with our song this morning. We want to hear you through the speaker that we might know you better, might understand your love for us, might understand what we need to do in our own lives. We love you so much, Lord. We ask all these things in your name, amen. Jesus, he's 
spent his life in doing good. I want to be like Jesus in lonely paths of service trust. I want to I wasn't sure. All right. Well, let's pray together, shall we? The altars are here. If you want to come up and bring your needs to the Lord, they're always open. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you. Just thank you for being you and loving us so much. Like we sang about this morning, we do want to be like you. Help us each, Father God, to just call upon your name and to just ask and to be willing to hear your answer and not the one that we've figured out on our own. Help us, Lord, to just have the strength and the wisdom to hear what it is that you have to say so we can be like you to our family, our friends, our neighbors, and to our congregation. Lord, there are so many things that are happening in our world. We know 11 years ago our world was rocked whenever the, um, our country was attacked. And we just pray, Father God, for all of the families who are still impacted. And uh, we haven't been the same since that, Lord, that we would continue to seek you and we would seek your wisdom and your grace and how we need to proceed as we continue this life. Father, for all the families who are still experiencing grief and who are still um, trying to figure out how to deal with the crisis that occurred um, 11 years ago, I just pray, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would strengthen them, and, Lord, that you would... Um, Help them to see that they can rest upon you and they can lean upon you in this time that they have together as a family and just, just be with them, Father God. And Lord, and we want to pray again for, for Pastor David and Leslie as they're away on vacation. We just ask, Lord, that they have a wonderful time with your hand of protection upon them. And Lord, that you would just bring them um, this rest that they need so they can come back refreshed, renewed, and just ready for whatever it is that you have for this congregation and this community, Father God. And for Charles, as he's recovering from surgery, we just lift him up once again, Lord. We just ask that you, your hand would, 
would have a part in him and, and um, heal him quickly, Lord, and so help the pain subside each and every moment. And Lord, for, for the things that we don't say out loud, may we each just utter those prayers to you right now. You know what's in our hearts already. You know what's on our minds. Just help us to be real, Father God, and to lay them down at your feet and to trust you so that we can be like your son, Jesus. We thank you once again for this opportunity to gather. We thank you for our brothers and sisters here. And we thank you, Father, for the brothers and sisters that are out there in the community just waiting for us to contact them. We love you so much today. For it's in your precious name we pray, Lord. Amen. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to speak now too or not. All right. Do you guys mind if I grab one of the music stands and go to the floor? Okay. All right. Well, I do want to say thank y'all for your graciousness, and uh, I heard compliments, so I thank you for those, too. It's much appreciated. I don't get the opportunity to preach much when my, my husband, the senior pastor, likes to preach a lot. So, And when we go on vacation, I'm not there to preach. So let's see. So I turn this on like this, right? It's on. Mm. Hey, Whoop, wrong way. <laughs> yeah, I want to be like Jesus too. And I remember um, elementary school. Okay, going back a few years. Elementary school, you know, when you're like in gym class and they're going to pick your teams and everything. And I was like, oh, they're going to pick me. They're going to pick me. They're going to pick me. And there was a couple times. I, I don't remember what happened exactly. I was probably not being very nice. And they picked me last. That was a horrible feeling, to be the last one picked. Nobody wanted me. It was terrible. And guess what I did? Oh, what happened? Guess what I did? Um, I started acting like the other popular kids. And I was like, determined, they're going to pick me. And by golly, they did. They did. You know what I did? I started beating up kids on the playground. And um, I started playing football with the guys. And um, I, I became like this tough kid. And so they wanted me on their team, of course. And, but you know what? After I got picked, I really felt crummy because I wanted to be picked for the wrong reasons. And I don't know what happened. There it is. Okay. Um, sometimes in our Christian walk, we will say, pick me, pick me. I want to do that. I can do that. I can do that. I, I am so good at this. I can do that. And we do a great job of diving in and maybe, you know, getting a ministry started and, you know, getting people rallied around us. But then it stops being about Jesus and starts being about us. I've done that. I don't know if you guys have or not, but I've done that. And, you know, when I look back at it, I'm like, oh, man, I did that. Shame on me. That's not where I was wanting to go in the first place. But then, oh, I can do that too. So I'm going to dive in there and I'm going to do that. I'm really good at that. I'm, I'm a great organizer. I can handle that. But then sometimes I, I fail to ask the question, should I? Just because I can doesn't mean I should, you know? So when we say, pick me, I want to be like Jesus, it's not because I have the know-how. It's not because I'm the prettiest. It's not because I'm the, you know, the best at this thing. It's because I want to be like Jesus. And what was Jesus? He was the humble. He was the rejected. He was the one that was born in a barn. But he's king of kings and lord of all. I want to be like Jesus. So I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about, I know you were kind of working your way through John, right? in the sermon series, and I think Pastor David's going to kind of finish that up in your, um, 
your, out, your outreach and push for Back to Church uh, Sunday next week, but um, I kind of went a diff- little different direction, but it's still about Jesus. Um, I want to talk about the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is in all of the Gospels, and we're going to concentrate specifically in Matthew today. So if you have your Bible, you can open it up to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to be in there for a little bit. And I want to kind of give you a little bit of a synopsis of the Sermon on the Mount. And um, he started it off, Jesus, when he was preaching the Sermon on the Mount, talking about um, blessings and how these certain things are blessed and there's certain things that aren't. And it was all about introducing his audience and the people who were there of what it is like to be in the kingdom. What it's like to be part of the kingdom. And it was so bizarre to them, he had to like repeat himself in like many different ways throughout the entire sermon. And um, well, kind of like us, we'll hear one thing one time, you're like, huh, it doesn't sink in. Until about five times later, <laughs> and then you're like, Oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that before. So Jesus was doing this, and he is the best teacher that we have ever. It's all about living for the kingdom, and here's what it is. And he breaks down some of the old laws that are Old Testament laws, you know, that Moses brought down. And he explains them in such a way that, yeah, but here I am to fulfill the law completely. Let me explain that to you. Okay, and he goes through it into such great detail through the entire sermon. I'm not going through the whole sermon today, thank goodness, because it's, we'd be here all afternoon. We don't want to do that. But we're just going to cover a small chunk, okay? So living a kingdom life looks different, than, and, you know, he knows that. He knows that about us. So that's why he's presenting this to all of the people there that are present, and he's saying, okay, here is how. I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to do it again. Lather, rinse, repeat. He didn't say that, though. Okay? So he started off the sermon, at least that's the way it's recorded in the Gospels. He started off the sermon talking about who are blessed and who are going to be, they're the merciful, they're the peacemakers, they're the persecuted because of righteousness one day. So that's kind of like, oh, this is good. I encourage you all to read the Sermon on the Mount. It's Matthew 5, 6, and 7, So, and it's in the other Gospels as well. We're going to tap into Luke 6. That's where these woes are right here, too, today. When Jesus was on earth, okay, so picture Jesus. He was okay with doing menial tasks. He was okay with scrubbing the nastiness in the corner of the bathroom. He was okay with picking toe jam out of people's toes. He was okay with the most disgusting, dirty jobs because he knew that's what we needed to see. He knew, okay? But I will. Remember the song, I want to be like Jesus. Okay, so since Jesus was willing to do all those menial tasks, it's an indication that it takes all of God's power in me to accomplish even the most, in me, to accomplish even the most common tasks his way. I, I, I came across this statement in a devotion that I read, and I was just like, no, that's not true. Yeah, that is true. You know, I had this little argument in my head. It's like, you know... Just the most common of tasks, picking up the phone and calling somebody or texting somebody. If I'm doing it my way, his will is not going to be done in the long run. It's still going to be all about me. It's going to be all about how I feel and how I choose to project my voice to see how the other person might be feeling. Okay, Whether or not I really care about that relationship, God does. So if I'm doing it my way, I'm not necessarily doing it his way. So that's why I chose this particular section in Matthew chapter 5. We're going to look about the blessings and the woes. He went in and he talked about some of these laws like murder and adultery, divorce and oaths. And then he's talking about getting revenge here and also loving our enemies. I chose these particular sections because I think these are things that we all struggle with from time to time. 
So verse 38. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn them the other cheek also. Down, because I can't. This is you to go. Go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward do you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Dear Lord, thank you once again for your word. And thank you for this um, beautiful section of scripture that you spoke, Jesus, while you were here on this planet. Help us, Lord, to understand what it means and to go a, a step farther, to apply it to our lives as we walk out of it. Go back. Let's go back. You've heard that it said an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, okay? So, I mean, you know, i got to bring up the science thing. You know, survival of the fittest, you know, get that, what's going to get you, and so on. But, I mean, that's what eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth is all about, right? Somebody punches you in the face, you punch them back. That's really not what this is saying here. This is saying, no, they punch you in the face, you turn, you say, hey, you forgot one. Okay? Not to retaliate. Why? The revenge is the Lord's, right? Revenge is the Lord's. We should fight back. So this is a really difficult thing. This is a difficult thing for me. I am, like, mostly Irish, so there's a lot of hot blood flowing through this body. And uh, so, yeah, it's a really difficult thing for me. Whenever, whenever that alarm goes off, I'm like, let's go. Let's fight. But i got to watch it. I can't do that. So... Okay, so if anybody slaps you on the right cheek, you got to turn. If anybody wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. What good is the fight going to be if it's not in the name of the Lord? If it's for our own good, if it's for our own preservation, it's not going to glorify the Lord. So that's something that we need to consider. If anyone forces you to go one mile with them, or go with them two miles. This one is difficult as well. None of us, as Americans, want anybody to force us to do anything. None of us. We like to have our burgers our own way. We like to have our car put together the way we want it. We like our homes the way we want them. We want our family to do what we said. But this is saying the direct opposite. This is saying, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them too. I had to do some digging on this. Lord, why is this something that we need to consider? And I had this amazing epiphany after doing some research and reading and, and stuff. And when, when a person has authority over us, God has given them that, that authority. And if they force us to go one mile, we are to go with them too. Maybe that extra mile is to maybe understand where they're coming from. Maybe that extra mile is to, to kind of get into our thick heads that they have the authority deemed by God. So we need to be obedient. But what if I don't want to? I don't think we have a choice. But there's always a choice, right? Whether or not we want to obey. So verse 42. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Have any of you ever had those people who come in and, like, show up for dinner all the time or who say, hey, that red shirt that you wore a couple weeks ago, can I borrow it? And you never see it again. Or how about the, the person that says, hey, you got five bucks. I need to get a few gallons of gas or maybe one or two gallons now. <laughs> 
and you never see that money back, and then they come back again two weeks later, hey, you got another five bucks? Oh, I really, I'm really hungry. I haven't had a chance to, to feed the family yet. Can, can we go get some chicken or something? Um, we all know people like that. And right here, Jesus is saying, give it to them. If you've got it to give, give it. Give it. Think about Jesus. Did he spare anything when he died for me? Did he spare anything? Did he hold back anything that I've asked for? Not a thing. So again, this is a section that was like, smack me in the face. Come on. I want to be like Jesus. This is what it takes to be in the kingdom. Have you heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy? That would be great. But I tell you, love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. Oh my goodness, this is so hard. This is so very difficult. Like when somebody gets sideways about you, and then they start running their mouth, and then they tell two friends, and they tell two friends, and all these friends are ganged up around you, and they're like, nah, 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 and they're really upset. Jesus is saying to love them and to pray for them when they are acting like that. And again, our human nature tells us to let them have it. But Jesus says, no, you love them and you pray for them. And that takes a big old heart check right there to say, okay, I want to be like Jesus. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to choke my way through it, but I'm going to do it. That's hard. That is so very hard. I had to do that this week. That was really hard. Okay. So that we may be children of our Father in heaven. And again, Jesus is bringing the bigger picture. He causes the sun to rise to such a giant force. We're still working on quantifying that with all of our telescopes and all of our instruments and technology and stuff. But God causes it to happen. And he wants us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And that sun rises on evil and good. And it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. Later on in the scriptures, we'll see where Jesus talks about the parables of the wheat and the weeds, the good and the bad, the sheep and the goats. That happens. And I'm like, why? Why, God, why? And if you flip back to the back of your Bible in Revelation, time and time again, the Lord gives every person the opportunity to choose whether they have been the most horrible person on earth or not they have the opportunity to choose so whether we're good or evil righteous or unrighteous he is still available that's why it's our job as brothers and sisters in Christ to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us is it easy no, not at all. Not at all. And then here's his reasoning. If you love those who love you, what reward do you get? They already love you. Are not even the tax collectors doing that? You remember, the tax collectors are the worst of the sinners at this point in time, right? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Just staying in your little club or your clique? Don't even pagans do that? Well, yeah. But he says, contrary to that, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So we got a little bit of a snapshot of what that perfection looks like. And I encourage you, go in and read the rest of the Sermon on the Mount because Jesus goes into the detail again and again and again. And he says, he explains it. What does it mean to be in the kingdom? I want to be there. Do you want to be there? I think you all do. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want to be there. Okay? So 
Our standard of perfection is to be God alone, the sovereign God of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. He is the one that is to be our standard, not that preacher, not that movie star, not that amazing evangelist that writes a bajillion books. It's to be God. It's to be God and God alone. Those people have great influence, and they do a great job of teaching, but we should not align our lives directly with them. It should be with God. So some of God's perfection is expressed in these verses. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2, whoops, let's go back, or we're not. Okay, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2, I don't know what's going on here. Um, it says, to speak the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. That was when the Lord was giving Moses instructions about, the, about how to live. And he was you know, laying out the law for the people at that time. That was Levit Leviticus 19, um, verse 2. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Uh, Paul says, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. And this one, this one right here has been something that's been um, knocking at my heart here lately because there's been some things that have happened in our church. There's been some things, a lot of disgruntled people, um, then they just get upset because really they don't understand what's going on. And they think they know, but they don't quite know, and then they get mad. And when that happens, I have a tendency to react to that. And my reaction is going to depend on whether or not I am being like Jesus or I'm not. And this verse right here, if I were to react the same way that they were acting, I would not be acting purified. I would be just reflecting what they were throwing out. And that's, that's going to be contaminating to them as well as myself and my own spirit. And you, you guys have walked on this earth for more than two days. So you know that this, this life is not easy. The things that we pick up on social media, the news that we see all of the time, that will affect us. And Paul is saying there to let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual body, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. That includes what we put in our mouths. That includes what goes out of our mouths. That includes how we treat our bodies, how we clean ourselves, how we take care of ourselves, how we relate with each other, what relationships we have. So it's huge. It's amazing. And uh, another verse for God's perfection is 2 Samuel. Oh, that went back. What's, what's going on? There it is. Okay, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 31. That's, that's a bad joke. Okay. <laughs> As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. So... I think we can all say that. God's way is perfect. His word is flawless. Even though there are times we don't understand what it has to say because we're not there yet, he is patient. He is so very patient with us, and I'm thankful for that. And Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore... I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies, the whole thing, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And this last verse here I wanted to share <laughs> is from Hebrews chapter 7, verse 28. For the law appoints as high priests men in all their weaknesses, but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. 
And I think that's, that's a verse that we can all bank on today. There are so many people who end up in authority who have been appointed by a higher authority, by man, and sometimes their weakness is the thing that causes whatever their leadership to fall. But we can count on the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, to be our leader, perfect forever and ever. So we can count on that. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on narcissistic behavior. And that's something that is very prevalent in our world today. And um, I wanted to, to share this little thing from you. It's a, a quote from John 13, 15. Jesus said, I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Like he was saying in the sermon as well. Notice the kind of people, this hit me really hard, the kind of people that God brings around you. And you will be humiliated once you realize that this is actually his way of revealing to you the kind of person you have been to him. Now he says we should exhibit to those around us exactly what he has exhibited to us. So, like when I was that kid in gym class, desiring so desperately to be picked. Pick me, pick me. When I was that new Christian that desired so desperately to be involved in all of these ministries because I can. I ended up finding myself in a position of, I really don't like myself. And I found myself around other people that I didn't like either. And I'll say this again. Notice the kind of people that God brings around you. And you will be humiliated once you realize that this is actually the way of revealing to you the kind of person you have been to him. When I woke up and I realized that I don't like this person, what do I do now? I kind of went into a tailspin of like, I don't like this at all, Lord. Help me, help me, help me. Then I finally got the message. I already have helped you. It's time you help those around you the way I helped you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for exhibiting to us again and again and again and teaching us again and again and again. And being so very patient when we are not. Lord, in our lives, we, you know, we get so distracted. We get caught up on colors and preferences and sounds and what things look like and how we feel emotionally. And sometimes we forget that we're on this mission for you. Lord, I want to be like you. And I thank you for your words. I thank you for how you so eloquently taught and laid it all out so that we shouldn't miss it. And when we do miss it, you remind us again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you for this privilege to be here today. And Lord, I just ask that as we go about our ways today, that we would call upon you before we utter something negative to somebody else. That we would call upon you before we cast judgment to somebody else that we see. That we would call upon you, Lord, and ask you in humility, in humbleness, how it is that we can reconcile with that one person that just hurt us to the core. You, Lord, have forgiven us, and we thank you. We want to be like you. For it's in your precious and holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 You all are dismissed.